Assalamu alaikum. Today I will discuss about agonist, antagonist, partial agonist, and inverse agonist. Okay, so I will try to discuss all of these things within a diagram and it will help you so much, inshallah. So let's start. At first, I will discuss about the agonist. So, suppose this round cell is a cardiomyocyte just for an example suppose this is a cardiomyocyte and here all of you know that in cardiomyocyte there is beta 1 adrenergic receptors okay and you know that epinephrine can bind with both beta 1 receptor beta 2 receptor and alpha 1 alpha 2 all of these receptors can be occupied by epinephrine so we can think that epinephrine is a ligand or epinephrine is agonist for these beta 1 receptors okay now epinephrine when epinephrine will bind with the beta 1 receptors it will activate the gs protein as beta 1 is a gs coupled protein now gs protein will produce more and more cyclin amp from the atp now this cyclin amp will activate the cyclin amp dependent protein kinase enzyme now this activated cyclin amp dependent protein kinase enzyme will do two things one is it will cause a flux of calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum okay so there will be increased concentrations of calcium ion in the cytoplasm or sarcoplasm of cardiomyocyte okay moreover the cyclin amp dependent protein kinase will open the calcium channel in the cardiomyocyte cell membrane so also some calcium ion will begin to enter from the extracellular space to intracellular space that means within the cardiomyocytes okay so ultimately beta 1 receptor will increase the intracellular calcium concentrations within the cardiomyocyte so this increased calcium will bind with the troponin c and ultimately it will activate the actin filament now this activated actin filament and myosin filament will cross link with each other that means actin myosin coupling will occur now this actin myosin coupling will lead to contraction of cardiomyocyte that means beta 1 receptor increases the force of contraction in cardiomyocyte just as same mechanism this beta 1 receptor will also increases the heart rate in case of as a node or junctional tissue of heart now if if we give the beta 1 receptor blocker that means atenolol this atenolol will block this beta 1 receptor that's why the epinephrine will not able to bind with beta 1 receptor because atenolol already blocked the beta 1 receptor that's why all of the sequences will not be happened that's why atenolol is a blocker that means atenolol is antagonist for the beta 1 receptor because it blocked the effect the response that is produced by agonist okay so epinephrine is agonist for beta 1 receptor and adenolol is antagonist for beta 1 receptors okay now let's start about the partial agonist okay so in case of partial agonist we have to remember two very important informations that means partial agonist can act both like as agonist and as antagonist so you may ask a question that when partial agonist will act like an agonist and when will partial agonist act like an antagonist yes partial agonist can act like an agonist in absence of full agonist or pure agonist and partial agonist can act like an antagonist in presence of full agonist or pure agonist okay so look at the diagram here pindolol is present and as well as epinephrine is also present that means that means here pindolol and epinephrine both are present near to beta 1 receptors now epinephrine all of you know that epinephrine is a pure agonist or full agonist for the beta 1 receptors and pindolol is a partial agonist so you tell me in this case will pindolol act like an agonist or antagonist definitely antagonist because i have told you that partial agonist 
act as an antagonist in presence of pure agonist as there is presence of pure agonist for the receptor that's why pindolol will act as an antagonist here that's why pindolol will occupy the beta 1 receptor and block this receptor that's why epinephrine cannot able to bind with the receptors and ultimately the subsequent submolecular signaling will not be happened now look at this point here just pindolol is present no full agonist or pure agonist is present there that's why pindolol will act here just like as agonist so pindolol will bind with this beta 1 receptor and it will starts the submolecular signaling but very important information that pindolol though pindolol can act as an agonist but the efficacy is less than the pure agonist but the efficacy of partial agonist is less than the pure agonist or full agonist so look at this graph of Cajun basic and clinical pharmacology look at the diagram here you can see the peak level of full agonist is higher than the peak level of partial agonist so we can say that partial agonist can act as an agonist but the efficacy is less than the full agonist or pure agonist okay now we will describe about inverse agonist the last one so before discussing about that i want to tell you a important conception that means some receptors of our body can maintain or can continue the submolecular signaling or post receptor signaling for a basal level or for a little amount without the presence of agonist that means there is no agonist on that receptors but even now the receptors is doing the post receptor signaling okay in absence of the agonist this is called the constitutive effect of receptors and those receptors are known as constitutive receptors okay so beta 1 receptors of cardiomyocyte is one of them that means beta 1 receptors can run the submolecular signaling without the presence of agonist this is one of the important informations to understand the mechanism of inverse agonist okay now look at the picture carvedilol this drug is an inverse agonist for the beta 1 receptor of heart now i have told you just now that beta 1 receptor can maintain the submolecular signaling without the presence of agonist okay but for a little amount for a basal level now this carvedilol will bind with the beta 1 receptor and that's why epinephrine suppose epinephrine come here But epinephrine will not able to bind with this beta receptor. Why? Because carvedilol already bind with the receptor. So epinephrine will not be able. But carvedilol just not only blocked the beta 1 receptor, carvedilol also blocked the constitutive effect of this beta 1 receptor. That's why when carvedilol will bind with the beta 1 receptors, agonist cannot bind with these receptors as well as the constitutive function or constitutive signaling capability of the beta 1 receptor will also be stopped there will be no submolecular signaling right now okay but in case of antagonist it only blocked the receptor but antagonist does not stop the constitutive effect of receptor but inverse agonist not only blocked the receptor it also stopped the constitutive effect of receptor it is the fundamental difference between an antagonist and inverse agonist that's why this carvedilol that's why this carvedilol is known as an inverse agonist for the beta 1 receptors okay that means i want to tell you that inverse agonist will act on only constitutive receptors because this inverse agonist blocked the constitutive effect of the receptors okay thank you everyone if you like my lectures then please like share and subscribe my channel be connected with me thank you